Hello, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And in this segment, I'm going to be going over poverty and health, the family medicine perspective. Um, first of all, poverty is a very complex um, determinant of health. Uh, this is caused by systemic factors that can persist over generations in a family, beginning before birth and continuing throughout an individual's life poverty can significantly impact health and health outcomes. Um, so the family physician, the vision is to transform healthcare to achieve optimal health for all. Um, so this goes into a call of action, um, a call to action, and um, it goes into urging uh, members to become informed about the impact of poverty on health. Um, so the call of action includes um, looking into the physician level, um, more informed about the social determinants of health, and identify tangible next steps, and then being aware and sensitive to your patient's specific circumstances to help them achieve their health goals. Um, practice level, um, identifying critical factors that impact patient health, leveraging the Everyone Project. Um, the community level, and I'm going to show you some of these um, links that are there. They're very helpful. Community leadership level, um, that is integrating primary care and public health. Um, that is more and more um, taking place. Um, and then the educational level, um, and then the advocacy level. Health in all policies. Um, and that is prioritizing health within goals and agenda setting. Um, so understanding poverty and low income status, um, the federal poverty income level was 12,760 um, as of 2020 um, and 26,200 for a family of four. Um, and as you can see, um, the poverty line and level are already very low. Um, so low income is defined as less than 130 to 150% of federal poverty income level. Um, and for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP, uh, the gross mo monthly income of 130% of federal poverty line um, is um, where you are eligible for SNAP benefits. Um, Medicaid is 138% of the federal poverty line. Um, so poverty and low income status are associated with various adverse health outcomes, including shorter life, expe life expectancy, higher infant mortality rate, and higher death rates for the 14 leading causes of death. So what I wanted to do next is look at the Everyone Project. Um, and this has a lot of um, uh, different types of diagrams um, that you can go over. Um, implicit bias training, practice leadership for health equity, um, community collaboration and, and advocacy assessment and action. And um, the combination of all four um, creates advancing health equity through family medicine. Um, and then you have the Everyone Project, which I'm going to be going over shortly. Um, then you have the LGBTQ plus health, um, a hot pride in care, anti-racism, um, the Everyone Project, COVID-19, and health equity. Um, so let's go back here and take a look at the Neighborhood Navigator. Um, and this is pretty cool because um, you can go into any community, um, and I'm going to, um, I typed in a um, service that is in Philadelphia, um, and then selected search. And as you can see, there's 300, uh, 3,808 programs um, in Philadelphia. Um, and you can go look at housing, um, help pay for housing, food, um, goods, um, baby supplies, um, transit, uh, health, end of life care over here, um, uh, money, um, care, um, education, work, and then legal. Um, and you have um, some of these um, health um, outcomes, um, 
anti-alcohol, um, detox, um, drug testing uh, medications for addictions. Um, so these are a, a set of resources that um, anybody that might be um, that that might be at the poverty line um, can um, do can use a lot of these resources. And also, uh, two one one is a, um, a telephone uh, program that um, allows individuals to kind of um, uh, navigate through the resources that are available. So the final thing that I want you to look at. Um, is to look at this um, diagram um, and this goes into the risk regulators um, well the first thing that I want you to look at is um, features of social built and natural environments um, so the risk regulators of the built environment are material conditions like food availability, uh, behavioral norms, rules, and expectations like dietary practices, discriminatory practices, policies, and attitudes like residential segregation, conditions of work migrant labor, uh, laws, policies, and regulations, cigarette taxes, and the neighborhood community conditions, fear of crime. So these are constraints, and then there's opportunities here as well. Um, uh, reversing a lot of these can um, actually help. Um, and then there's opportunities um, here. Um, and then when you have exposures and inputs, um, what you have to look at is the regulatory systems on the biological level and the genetic level. So a cardiorespiratory system, endocrine system, immune system, uh, nervous system, and metabolic system. All of these, when they're expressed, um, they have regulatory impact, um, uh, mostly negative um, within the human, uh, within the person. Um, so that wraps up um, what I was going to go over um, today. Um, uh, I hope this has provided you with some uh, wonderful insight. Thank you for listening.